For more on what Powell said and what we learned from today's Fed Minutes, our senior economics reporter Steve Leesman is here in the on house. set. Cool in the game. In the house. In the house. Cool in the gang. Um, what was the How most am I supposed thing? to cover the Federal Reserve when you put up a graphic <laughs> like Powell Palooza? What's wrong with that? <laughs> it's like Fantastic. old school. It captures the sentiment. And you today. play the music. It's right. Okay. It's uh. We was, I, I was doing that. We can, we them to can do it play again. it throughout your whole hit. Like, I knew they would. <laughs> if you go them in the control room, they'll take the bait every time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it was Powell Palooza is not a bad way to characterize okay. it. Uh, he had every opportunity to push back against the market being pretty darn sure that there was going to be a rate cut. And instead of uh, pushing them back, he sort of said, come on, we're going to go more in, in, in terms of how, I don't mean more in terms of more rate cuts, but you can be more sure. He emphasized the negatives uh, and really downplayed the positives. What I thought was interesting also is that, you know, the markets really threw into doubt at least the 50 basis point cut later this month once we got the jobs report. But Powell actually said to have a hot jobs market, we need heat. So he sort of said to the markets, look through that strong number. I mean, that's the message He was that as I got. dovish about the job market as I've ever heard him and maybe as dovish as any Fed chairman I remember. Remember, 3.7 percent unemployment rate. You have 3.1 percent uh, uh, wage gains. Uh, all this talk about trouble finding workers. And I think the exact quote was, uh, if something is hot, there has to be heat. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he doesn't see. Isn't he heat. talking about inflation, though, there, Steve? It, the heat the would lack be the thereof? inflation. Well, well, I think right. in the first order, it would be wage growth, really strong wage growth. And, and he makes a point, by the way, that Janet Yellen made as well, which is wage growth that has inflation plus productivity is not inflationary. So let's, let's, well, let's do the math. Two percent. Um, uh, inflation and call it one and a half percent or two percent uh, productivity growth means you could grow wages at four percent and a Fed official or chairman should not be concerned about the inflationary potential of that. So if he's not concerned about inflation right now and you have trade concerns on his mind and global growth is weakening. Right. You sound like a skeptic. I, I don't think he should be cutting rates either. But he made the case where it's probably warranted. So at the first part of your comment to me, you told me the reason why he's OK doing this. And why it's point. Okay. There's no doubt. There's very little <laughs> downside risk. Right. You have the low inflation um, and a quarter point onto the downside. I don't think is a big deal. But I want to just ask me the question. How dovish was was Powell? How, how dovish, dovish was Powell? Powell? You guys dovish. are great. Yeah. OK. So how was it was it a Powell Palooza? Listen very carefully here to this question from Congressman Gonzalez. When, he, when, when the Congressman was asked him, are you going to lower rates? Listen. Would it be fair to characterize, based on what we're seeing on those two factors specifically, uh, that a strong case could be made for lowering? So, um, yes, as, as I mentioned, um, uh, we think that um, uncertainty around, around trade policy and also global growth, it's not, it's not all down to trade policy. There's, right. there's uh, something going on with... Uh, growth around the world, particularly around manufacturing and investment and trade. Um, and so that uncertainty is, is we think, weighing on uh, the domestic economy. So I, I think he said yes to lowering rates. I'm not skeptical. I just would think, having covered Fed chair folks for a long time, mm -hmm. he would claw back a little flexibility, want to put a little doubt in the market. He was like, you know, full bar head. I'm not an economist. Not that smart. I've said it a million times. I just play one on TV. And you do a good job. Thank but I'll, 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 say, I'll say this. Um, greatest economy in the history of mankind. Why slowdown to me is a natural part of the cycle. Why, is the, why are central banks globally, specifically our Fed, so frightened of one? I, I will not make this a long answer, but I will go back and tell you this. There is always a feeling about central banks. They can't pick their unemployment rate but they can pick their inflation rate. It was the one thing the central banks thought they could do. And we're finding out they can't. And what's going on now is inflation around the world is not hitting the target. You should be able, as a central banker, to put enough money out there in the economy to create inflation. But there are massive forces going on that appear to be make it very difficult for them to do that. So I think if I had to make a list of stuff that why are they cutting, it would be continuously not hitting their inflation rate. It would be the global growth problem and, and probably trade up there as well. There was an interesting aspect to this testimony by Powell, which was a clarion call to the President Trump to get this trade stuff out of the way. He kept coming back to the uncertainty created by trade.
Steve, thank you. My pleasure. This was great. Steve Lee's great to have was you. great, <laughs> this palooza. All right, so can you jump on this Fed rally or are the gains perhaps in question? Are they already priced in? Pete Nigerian, what do you say? I still think there's upside. I think, I think people are wanting reasons to be in this market and they continue to find different reasons. And once again, if the Fed's going to do what they're going to do and people are searching for rates and everything else, I think we're going to continue to see people pile in towards the market. Does that mean it's the right thing? I'm not so sure about that. But I think the reaction is going to be people are going to be buying into the idea that this market can go higher. And I think you and I were down there earlier. I think Scott Miner was talking about the idea that, hey, 3,500 is not that far out of the question mm. at this point in time. He actually said 3,500. We're talking about 3,000 today. So. Wow. Are we going to see those kind of numbers? I don't know if we get that high, Mel, but it feels to me like people are willing to jump into the market and have that exposure. Tim? Well, if you think about what moved today, it gives you reason to believe that maybe we can go higher. I mean, Amazon, right? Again, I talked about this yesterday. Well, Amazon, it's there. It's at all-time highs. Uh, if you think about the triple Qs, they outperformed. If you think about the things that underperformed, it was transports, it was industrials, it was things that really haven't been performing. But when you tell me we've got a market where also I'll steal some of Pete's VIX thunder, I mean, if the VIX plunges by 7% today, that was almost one of the most important things you could get on a day like today, which is the Fed put is back and everything that gives you reasonable growth at a reasonable price is, is something that's going to continue to move. And that's what this trade is. I, I think, can I, I say think one people, more thing about this sure. volatility that Tim just brought up? Say two We're more. already at the lower end. We're at the lower end of volatility and yet we still went further. I mean, we got into the 12s on the lows today and the upper 12s, but still into the 12s. So, so, so you said people are piling well. into the market. I think people want a reason to be short the market. And the, well, they have plenty of reasons to be short. It's just not working. So right. I think that's going to add to the upside potential. I do think we break above 3,000 incredibly. Well, you know, what's staggering is that when you read through the testimony and you hear Powell, he's basically outlining all the reasons why the economy is sort of on a threat. Or, right. or that maybe that's a He added dramatic, a few today, but, by the way, right, that weren't exactly. even there. Like the, debt the deficit. The, the, exactly. I mean, the deficit, right. leverage right. lending. I mean, these new, so these new all things. All of these worries, he's just ticking off. Check, 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 and yet here we are. Markets to 3,500 right. all of a sudden. I mean, but the it's, VIX it's said crazy. closing at basically 13 to your point. Yeah. You know, levels that have typically been warning signs. Listen, you can't deny the fact that the S&P goes up effectively every day. You know, I'm one of these people that tries to fight against it unsuccessfully, but I'll also try to point out things that are continue to be warning signs. Look, gold continues to move to the upside. Yes, it had a week off last week. Big move today. Small caps do not participate in this rally. I don't know what it means, but I think if the rally was broad-based, you'd have them there. And transports had a pretty miserable day today as well. The banks in Europe all of a sudden magically get better on the back of this? I don't think so. With all that said, the market is telling you, to Steve's point, and I think to Pete's point and Tim's point, it wants to go higher. The warning signs will matter. I thought they mattered 150 S&P handles ago. And that's the problem. Clearly they don't. That's the right. problem. Shorts, shorts got hurt, and now they have every reason to be short yet again. But the problem is every time you lay a short out there, you have to scramble to cover. The market's been up hundreds of handles in your face. Financials. Couldn't catch a bit today. It was interesting. You know, we had a 10-year auction today, too. Tough day for a 10-year auction when you've got Powell out there. You had European bond yields move higher. You actually saw the 10-year move higher. Um, uh, ultimately, I, I think the banks in the short run have digested the worst of the yield curve flattening, though. Uh, and if you look at financials over the last, really, since June, when we've had this rally, let's call this uh, the last six weeks, financials are underperforming the market slightly, but they're, they're not a disaster. And, and we've talked about their ability to give capital back to investors. I think the worst of the yield curve flattening is, is probably behind us for now they're cutting rates that steepens the yield curve yeah. in the midst of all this though we saw consumer staples do well yes a top performing sector in the yes. S&P 500 how do you read that in the midst of your well, calls for 3500 on, on many of these different names I think you, you still people I don't necessarily always agree with it but you still sure. see people that are reaching for for some kind of yield right I mean and you look at a lot of these various names that are moving to the upside they have great yield so people are still looking for that so there's a I hate the word defensive, but there's a defensive stance by some. Still. And then there's the aggressive side that are going after these tech names that they think aren't done. Tim mentioned Amazon. I'd say Netflix. I'd say Amazon. I'd say Facebook. I'd say Apple. I mean, people are still coming for those names. And the semis today, they were really, really active, had a nice day once again. You look at Micron, you look at some of these names moving to the upside. AMD, another very strong day.